Now, the Australian voters will have uh, some recourse against the politicians this year. We've got uh, state elections in South Australia, Tasmania and Victoria. Uh, probably uh, South Australia is uh, one of the, the most important ones because that is where the uh, climate change renewable energy madness is most present because they've had a Labor government there for uh, 16 years and they actually have no coal-fired power stations left. And uh, basically the, the Premier there, he's, he's still... He even though the state's, you know, experienced blackouts, has the highest power prices in the world, he's still, uh, you know, full st full steam ahead. I mean, he's tried, uh, he, he he's tried to have have these like, oh, you wouldn't even call them solutions like the 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 battery, which can, I believe, you know, power uh, a blackout for three hours, uh, um, which which is not yeah. a lot, not a long time. Uh, he, he just seems incapable of saying, like, you know, I, we've stuffed this up, you know, we need reliable power. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, election is going to be absolutely fascinating to watch. Um, you would think that with a government that, by the time the election comes, Labor would have been in power 16 years continuously in South Australia. Uh, they have absolutely destroyed the economy of South Australia. It's got one of the highest unemployment rates in the world, in Australia. And you would think, would you not, that the Liberal Party would be in a prime position to absolutely kick the living daylights out of them, rip them to shreds and storm into power. But according to the latest polling, Nick Xenophon and his party, you know, the eternal agiprop sort of uh, outsider-type candidate, he's never actually had to govern anything at all. Uh, and here he is. He apparently he's polling higher than the other major parties with this South Australia Best Party. Uh, it's an absolutely indictment on the Liberal Party in South Australia. Uh, they can only, they, even with all that, they're still only polling two percentage points above Labor. Um, and they've got so much ammunition to throw at them. They wreck the power system. The only way they can affect the employment situation is by employing more public servants. Uh, he's done this thing with the battery you talked about. He's got these diesel generators. Uh, you, you would think it would be open slather. Uh, so what happens in South Australia is going to be very interesting. Uh, in some of the other polling, um, the last poll I read about uh, the minor parties, um, the Australian Conservatives were polling at about 3%. Uh, one nation that's not even registered in South Australia was polling at 6%. So they were doing better than them. Uh, obviously, they've got a bit more name recognition. They've been around a bit longer. Uh, so the end result is going to be quite fascinating. What would be most interesting to see is what would happen to Nick Xenophon if he actually had to govern anything uh, rather than just constantly being the uh, outsider champion of the people type image that he's fostered. He portrays himself as a centrist, uh, you know, not left, uh, not right, you know, just for practical um, solutions. But, uh, you know, his voting record is that in, in the Senate days, most of the time he votes for the Greens. He actually is, you know, wanting to go full steam ahead with uh, renewable energy. Like he may, you know, say he wants to tweak things uh, a bit. But, you know, why would we believe that, you know, he could, you know, do, uh, do a, a superior job of, you know, uh, having the, you know, transition to renewable energy when we know based on, you know, simple, um, uh, you know, elect electricity uh, factors that that can't happen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He is a, uh, he is a leftist wolf in centrist sheep clothing uh, is basically what uh, Nick Xenophon is. And uh, gee, if you think the state's in a mess under Labor, imagine if he was running it. Uh, that's where his heart lies. Where people's vote is shows you a good indicator of where uh, they really are leaning philosophically. And as you quite rightly pointed out, that is the history of Nick Xenophon. And of course, there's a state election in my home state, uh, Victoria, where uh, Daniel Andrews, he's the, the champion of the, the Safe Schools uh, program, the uh, unfiltered Ros Ward Marxist version. Uh, and he's all, and he's also um, you know uh, overseeing this uh, politically correct ap approach to uh, law and order, which has seen uh, you know uh, it's really uh, you know flared up this month the African youth gang crime wave. We've just seen you know violent crimes uh, th throughout the city, and they're 
uh, you know, the, the police and their uh, Victorian government, well, not Daniel Andrews himself, he's still off, off on holidays, but they've said that, oh, you know, we do have a problem with you know, African gang violence now. It's like, well, t- it took you uh, long enough. And uh, D- Daniel Andrews, he's always been more interested in, you know, vir- virtue signalling, you know, w- uh, wasting money on, you know, like community and arts uh, uh, projects. And uh, I really think that um, the polling at the moment uh, is is 50-50. The, um, if, the, if the Victorian Liberal Party can, you know, really uh, st- step up their attacks on, on Andrews, then, you know, they can, can save the state. Yeah, and again, I'm brought to the I'm brought to the uh, the thought there that with all the ammunition the Liberal Party has, uh, you've got a government that spent like a billion dollars to not build a road. Uh, you've got this uh, crime wave that apparently isn't a crime wave now; it is. There wasn't gangs, and now there are. Uh, you know, basically just lying to the public. You know, there's gangs of immigrants. Everybody else knows there's gangs of immigrants. People who have been punched in the head know there's gangs of immigrants. The only people who doesn't know there's gangs of immigrants was the police spokesman. And now they had to come out and admit uh, that they're actually just lying to everybody. So you've got this situation where you, you've got the most incompetent government imaginable, the, uh, the government that implemented the safe schools program. And yet still the Liberal Party is only managing 50-50. Uh, you think they could tear them to shreds. Uh, but again, it, it comes back down to this point that we saw here in Queensland uh, in November last year with the election. Uh, the Liberal Party keep bringing a knife to a gunfight. And every single time, they keep getting the living daylights kicked out of them. And they've got to start fighting. And they've got to start getting really aggressive in their campaign. You can't nice your way into government. Well, they really need to harness the, the anger that's uh, been building up in Victoria. Because you know, they have... And, and of course, it's, it's not just the, um, uh, the, uh, the youth crime wave. It's, it's also that we've had three car attacks now in the, in, in the CBD. Um, you know, two, uh, mm. two of them were, were deadly. And the uh, two alleged um, uh, perpetrators were both uh, known to police and both had, uh, you know, histories of mental health, which is, you know, a failure of uh, government and the, uh, and, the, and the justice system. So the, the the people of Victoria they are starting to you know cry out for for somebody to to fix this. Absolutely, um, and they're being shown, unfortunately, that the people that want to be the alternative government aren't really showing themselves to be up to the job yet. So let's hope uh, they can get the message and start turning that around down there. Uh, I would fear so much for the state of Victoria if you get a re-elected Andrews government. Uh, what he could do in another three or four years is sort of doesn't work. You know, it's too scary to think about. Uh, can you imagine children that are going to school now uh, having the compulsory uh, safe schools program or whatever they name it tomorrow, they'll just rejig it a little bit. Uh, but whatever they do, call it, it's going to be the same sort of theory and ideas and so you're going to have kids going through three or four years of compulsory schooling. Remember, you have to send your kids to school uh, and they're going to be indoctrinated with these ideas and you're going to have a continual... This is this is why it's one of the most important battlegrounds because you can get kids when they're young and teach them your theories and ideas. They'll stick with them as they get older, uh, which is kind of like what we're seeing now with this continual shift in the inner city sort of areas towards the Greens. There's generations now have been brought up with this sort of leftist ideology and they all think it's going to be a great idea. Uh, there's been surveys done recently uh, of youth, and they, they do not know. They have no idea what communism was or what it did. Uh, people of my generation, I'm 46, and I grew up in the Cold War era. We saw what communism did. We saw those people. They couldn't get away from these ideas fast enough. Some of this generation now, they've got no idea uh, what those things were like. So they're kind of like open slaver for the attacks of these other people, and they can be persuaded with sort of um, sophistry and clever arguments without actually considering what happened everywhere else in the world where this was sort of implemented. And we may have a, a federal election uh, later this year because the, the last federal election was uh, uh, a double dissolution election, which means that um, the, uh, this uh, federal election can be held uh, anywhere from July 2018 to um, Ju- uh, June 20. 20- 
uh, 19. And based on the polling, uh, and it's consistent, uh, it looks like we're heading for you know, Prime Minister you know, Bill Shorten, even though all of the, the crisis that we're facing uh, in Australia at the moment were caused by the, the Labor government under Rudd Gillard. I mean, they kick-started the, the energy policies, the, the, the budget deficit. Um, you know, it was you know, their you know, appointments to you know, bodies such as the, the Human Rights Commission that uh, started this assault on you know, free, uh, free speech. So it, it, se- it seems bizarre to me that, you know, given all these problems, the, the polling suggests that Australians think that Labor's the answer. Yeah, look, and again, I think it comes back down to the fact they're not having the alternative argument. They're not seeing a, a sort of realistic sort of alternative. Um, when you have a weak leader that doesn't stand for it, he doesn't believe they sort of trying to just make themselves a small target. It's not going to work anymore. Uh, Theresa May tried this sort of thing in the UK election, and she and everybody else there was quite shocked by the amount of support that Jeremy Corbyn and the uh, sort of the revived Labor Party have over there when he's, he's advocating uh, sort of soft or hard, even in some cases, socialism. He's advocating nationalising industries again. Um, and if, if people don't hear the alternative, they don't see sort of a credible, strong leader that can argue the case and persuade them that, hey, uh, all these unicorns and fairy floss these people are offering you isn't going to be there. Uh, they'll take your money, they'll control your life, but all the benefits you think you're going to get from it aren't going to be there. And to do that, you have to be someone who believes in something. And in the Liberal Party with Malcolm Turnbull, you have someone who believes in one thing, uh, that he should have been Prime Minister. And that's pretty much the sum total of his conviction. Yeah. So that's the sort of danger we're going to be in. If we have a shortened government, everything that we've just talked about in the state level and the things we've seen in the past, you're going to see it on steroids. We've talked about the challenges we'll face in 2018. Uh, Now we should probably look at uh, how to... This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.